what is busking, who does it, where did it start, and how long has it been around? These are the questions that will be answered in this Busk Stop workshop. My name is Adelaide Punkin, and this is the history of busking. Busking or street performance is the act of performing in public places for gratuities or tips. Busking is practiced all over the world and goes way back in our history, thousands of years, to the Greek, Roman, and Egyptian empires. Laws affecting buskers first show up in Rome around 460 BC. Essentially, these laws made it illegal for street performers to work without Senate approval under penalty of death. In the 1530s, Henry VIII ordered the licensing of all minstrels and players. Performing without a permit made you subject to jail and being publicly whipped for two consecutive days. Luckily, history has changed its favor on busking. In America, busking is laced in the history of our country and tied directly to the Constitution, specifically the First Amendment. And it is super important to our civil rights and our protective freedoms. Etymology. Busking in English was first coined in the 1860s, but its origins are much older. Tracing the root word, we find it comes from the Spanish verb buscar, meaning to hunt and scrounge. So its meaning was negative, and it was used to describe criminals like prostitutes and vagrants. So the word was an insult if it was used for street performers. In medieval France, traveling performers were first known as troubadours, but the French eventually adapted the Spanish word and pronounced it busquier. The French meaning was similar. It meant to sneak or prowl. It was still an insult to the troubadours, and it solidified the term as a way to describe a hustler, vagrant, or scam artist. History and tradition. The art of busking is still very common and a great tradition among the Romani people or gypsies. The term gypsy is no longer acceptable, however, and this group prefers the name Romani to be used to describe the heritage of their people. The Roma, as they are known, brought a rich tradition and pride to their craft into England, through Spain, and up north through Europe. The level of craft brought to busking by the Roma solidified the traveling entertainer as a viable part of the cultural landscape. Mexico has a great tradition with the mariachis. These musicians still perform in this classic style while traveling through streets and plazas in Mexico. They move in and out of restaurants and bars throughout the day, and then settle into a location for a night of music and celebration. For an anime film, Coco does an excellent job exploring that tradition in a cool way, and it is a fun movie all around. It's these rich traditions that begin to remove a stigma attached to the word busquier and the art of busking. In America, the tradition of busking is deep-rooted in our culture. It is actually one of the sparks used to ignite the American Revolution. Through the public campaigning and free press distribution of Benjamin Franklin, busking was used as a very powerful tool. You'll hear Ben's name quite a bit in this video. Still, it took about 100 years before Americans started to accept busking as a positive part of our culture. This positive era came in with the great American medicine shows popping up everywhere in the early 19th century. Traveling vendors selling health potions and goods would provide entertainment to draw people in, and after each performance, buskers would pass the hat. When I get booked to play outdoor events like farmer's markets, to me it feels a lot like a medicine show. I will have my case open or my busking can out, and they're here selling their wares, locals wandering around like visitors to a Romani camp, all coming together celebrating the old tradition. You can see the effects of busking in early America in a number of films like Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? The story is laced with the folk traditions of this time and how recording brought the music to the forefront of American culture. Delta Blues made its way around the U.S. in the open cases of blues musicians in the early 1940s, planting the seeds of rock and roll all over the U.S. It's clear folk music is a big part of busking tradition, telling stories of people and places traveled. It's a way to spread tales of the land, and two of the most famous folk singers, Woody Guthrie and Joan Baez, began their careers by making a living this way. In the 1950s, folkies played coffee houses and pubs where they were allowed to use a tip jar. Busking was and is the easiest way to make money independently outside of a venue or recording and distribution. Hippies and protesters in the 60s staged be-ins that became outlets for buskers and some of the best snow performers of the time like Janis Joplin, The Grateful Dead, Jefferson Airplane, Country Joe and the Fish all played these kind of events. They pushed the limits of what busking could do in the United States and under the protection of the First Amendment. The term free speech extends to busking as a freedom of expression and freedom to assemble and the hippies knew this. The place to busk were parks, street corners, and sidewalks, in the thoroughfares and town squares and plazas. 
The hippies and yippies used this to their advantage, just like Woody Guthrie and Lead Belly had done two decades earlier. This tradition of taking it to the streets peaceably with art and song can never be denied thanks to one of the greatest buskers in history and founding father Benjamin Franklin. James Madison, the author of the first ten amendments to the Constitution, was strongly encouraged by Franklin to make the First Amendment reflect the religious and democratic freedoms necessary to speak freely, worship freely, gather freely, and file and complete freely. So if you think about it, once Woodstock became a free event, it could easily be described as one giant busking event with one heck of a circle show. Now in honor of James Madison, Mr. Benjamin Franklin, and the champions of freedom of expression, here is a list of some of the famous buskers throughout history, starting with Mr. Franklin himself. Benjamin Franklin was a street performer and soapbox crier. Ben wrote songs, poetry, and spoke out about current events. He would sell printed copies of his work to the public and hand out flyers that spoke of revolution. So it's true that some of the seeds of our democracy were sown in the streets by a world-class busker. Ben was originally discouraged from busking by his father who told him it was not worth the negative views people would attach to it by calling him a gypsy. Ben saw it very differently and worked to rebel against his father's views and the crown. Ben helped change the way we can express ourselves in America because this successful campaigning experience helped him become a champion of freedom of expression and freedom of the press, giving us the beginning of the First Amendment. Tracy Chapman began her career busking, but that's a little understated. She was a different class of busker. Tracy got a permit from the Cambridge Arts Council in Massachusetts, giving her busker's rights in popular areas of Harvard Square. This led directly to being signed to Electra Records in a lucrative recording contract following her graduation. Mike Dowdy, former singer of Soul Coffin, released Busking in 2007 with live recordings made in the 14th Street subway station in New York. Sterling McGee and Adam Gasau, known as Satan and Adam, were busking in Harlem in 1987 when U2 and a film crew stopped to record them. The footage was used in the film Rattle and Hum and led to a recording contract for the duo. As people know that Jules spent time living out of her van while busking and playing small gigs in coffee shops. She describes it as being an extremely difficult way to live, but she wouldn't give up the experience for anything. George Michael of Wham! used to busk in the London Underground, performing covers like 39 by Queen because the acoustics helped him hone his craft and perfect his sound. Catch the Core and the Old Crow Medicine Show started out busking and even after becoming regulars at the Grand Old Opry remained committed to street performing. Rod Stewart and folk singer Wiz Jones started busking in London together in 1962. They traveled to Paris and all over Europe sleeping under bridges and using tips to survive. They finally ended up in Barcelona, Spain where Rod was eventually deported for vagrancy in 1963. Popular Scottish singer KT Tunstall was and is a busker. She's been seen a bunch of times busking in Glasgow, even after her successful recording contract. T-Rex members Mark Bolin and Steve Peregrine Took started acoustic busking in Hyde Park in 1967 after their electric equipment was confiscated by Track Records. The duo would go on to release three albums together based on the experience. The Violent Femmes were discovered by the Pretenders in 1981 when they were busking in front of a theater in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Chrissy Hines invited them to play a brief acoustic set after the opening act. Here on YouTube, you can find dozens of busking videos with current bands and performers just taking to the streets to play. Check out the busking segment that Jimmy Fallon has with Christina Aguilera, U2, and a bunch of other performers. I've seen performers like John Mayer, Billy Gibbons, Ed Sheeran, Lenny Kravitz. It's surprising street performers by just walking up and sitting in for a song or two. So to wrap up the first segment of the Rock Your Block Bus Stop Workshop, remember busking is a time-honored tradition practiced all over the world and it is a powerful tool for expression and it is a part of our inalienable rights. Tune in next time for tips and tricks where we'll bring you up to date on all the best equipment and techniques to get you out busking. A shout out to our sponsors, Rock Your Block, Warner's Best CBD, Nature's Gifts in Avon, Connecticut, Platinum Polka Dot in Art Life Culture, and our busking partners, the Northwest Connecticut Arts Council and the Torrington Collective. And never forget, it's your right to rock your block. The First Amendment states that Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, or abridging the freedom of speech or the press, 
or the right of people to peaceably assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. That's it. My name is Adelaide Pumpkin, and that was the first segment of our Busk Stop Workshop. See you next time. Enjoy the journey.